Kristen Brzezowski. I'm the executive editor of World Screen, and I am delighted to have with me Dean Deflin, the CEO of Electric Entertainment. Hi, Dean. Thanks so much for being with me. Hi. Th thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And my goodness, in these current times, I have to imagine that what you're hearing from buyers is a little different, uh, perhaps, than the needs that they had in their past. So what is it when you're speaking to clients during these unprecedented times? What are you hearing from them? Well, you know, I think at first it was a rush to get completed projects because so many things had been stopped midway through. Uh, but I think now there's been an adjustment, you know, on programming and, and, and financing and scheduling. So it's really a territory by territory thing now. You know, I, I think that, uh, um, you know, that there's, there's been some real surprises in all of this. You know, in, for instance, uh, uh, viewing, television viewing has gone way up, but ad dollars have gone way down. <laughs> so, so what what could have been a, a you know a a a silver lining is not quite so silver. <laughs> now, how are you working with clients when they might have a gap in their schedule, be it from productions that were halted or sports events being canceled? How are you working with them to help fill some of those gaps? Well, luckily, the series that we were doing in the Philippines, we, we I, I actually directed the finale, and I called rap. 18 hours before the airports got shut down so it was literally you know like that scene in saigon at the at the, at the end of the vietnam war where we were racing to get to the to the last helicopter out of town <laughs> uh, but we did and we completed the season so you know we feel good that we've got a, a, a you know the, a, the full season of almost paradise so we're trying to you know set that up in as many places as possible and of course we're we're in the third season right now of a tv series we do called the outpost and they did get shut down but um uh serbia just opened up they just opened up last week so we're we're very optimistically uh, uh, uh feeling that we will be able to complete the season in time and get it to everybody fantastic and i mean my goodness you produce in countries all over the world yeah, What's your sense of how things are progressing and getting productions rolling again? Well, you know, the biggest issue for independents like us is, is uh, the insurance. Because the insurance companies do not want to um, insure against COVID. And of course, the banks insist that you are insured for COVID. So in previous productions, we're, we're covered because we already have those insurance policies in place. Uh, but in future projects, it, it's, it's hard. So we, we've been talking uh, uh, very closely with, uh, 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 well, I've been talking with Congressman Ted Lieu, and there's some other congressmen, and they, they're trying to come up with a, back, a, a federal backstop so that insurance can, uh, so insurance companies can insure for COVID, knowing that if they get hit hard, the government will step in. Step in. This, this isn't the first time this has happened. You know, there was TRIA that came out of 9-11. Uh, so there's, there is a good example of how to do this. And uh, uh, luckily, both sides of the aisle uh, are working on various plans to, to create this, this insurance backup. So I, I'm cautiously optimistic it'll get done quickly. In the last year, Electric has launched a number of new services, including the Electric Now OTT channel, yeah. Uh, with a lot of people at home and streaming. How's the rollout been for that? And where's the service at now? Well, it's really interesting because, you know, uh, uh, for we, we, I think we debuted a little less than a year ago, um, but we've primarily been on, on three uh, platforms, Stir, Exumo, and uh, uh, Distro TV. And since uh, everybody's gone into lockdown, our numbers have gone up by over 400%. But again, ad dollars have also gone down, so it, it balances out a little bit. Uh, the app just came out a, a, little, a little less than two weeks ago, and it's been kind of astonishing. Uh, uh, you know, we haven't spent a single dollar yet on marketing, and uh, um, it seems to be getting a lot of early adoption. We're, we're, we're averaging about 90 minutes per viewer uh, uh, per day, so it's it's... It's working out so far better than we expected. So we're we're very, uh, uh, again, cautiously optimistic that uh, that this um, that this will turn out to be a good thing for us. And let's talk about that app. What led up to its launch, and what all does it offer consumers? Well, you know, a lot of it came out of 
the, a pure fan perspective. Um, you know, we noticed that we had several big fan bases that weren't necessarily overlapping. You know, uh, Leverage has this enormous fan base. Uh, uh, the interesting thing about that, uh, that the research has shown, is that it's way more popular now than when it was actually an, in its initial run because so many people discovered it in other ways. So there's this huge fan base there. And yet uh, the librarians, which had maybe five times the audience uh, when it was on television, uh, you know, that's another huge fan base. And then of course, Outpost is a, this fantasy uh, fan base. And I've, I've always been wrestling with how, how can I aggregate them in one place? And uh, that's when the idea of the app came about because uh, what we are discovering is that people who loved um, Leverage, for instance, are suddenly going, oh, what is this show, The Triangle? I'd never seen that before. I hadn't heard about that. And there's a, a sort of presumption that if you like one thing we do, you're probably going to like most of the other things we do. We, we, we tend to be fairly consistent in tone uh, and in quality. Uh, so we, you know, we, we're hoping that we're creating a, a singular place for our fans to go and enjoy our, our content. And um, we're just real big believers in AVOD. And we think that they're, you know, we want to get in early, learn about it. And, uh, and, and figure out where this is going. An electric surge is another new offering from the company. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and how response has been to the service. I'm, I'm a 50 plus year old geek and Mark Altman is a 50 plus year old geek. And uh, Mark decided he wanted to uh, uh, start off uh, a podcast and he created a podcast with some others called The 430 Movie. And it was really more just for his own kind of entertainment but it really started kicking off. It started doing really well. And so he and I started talking. I said, well, why don't we videotape them and turn them into video podcasts instead of just audio? And let's come up with a slate of shows. Well, Mark is literally the foremost expert on Star Trek in America. He's written like four books on it. I mean, he, I used to think of myself as a Star Trek geek and, and, and I am a rank amateur when I am around Mark Altman. And so he started a podcast uh, that we do call uh, Inglorious Trexperts. And again, with no promotion, with no marketing behind it, we're already at something like 40,000 subscribers uh, on, on the show. So uh, we put it on the app and it's already the most popular podcast we do. Uh, and we're doing new podcasts all the time. So it, it gives the, the app and the channel about 20 hours of new content every single month. Um, now it's it's not for everyone's taste, <laughs> but for those who who uh, who like this kind of uh, uh, entertainment, this kind of escapist uh, uh, entertainment, these are really surprisingly interesting shows. I, I've I've turned people onto it who really thought that they would have no interest, and they say, you know, I, I can't stop listening to it. So you know, our hope is people will put the app on their phone and maybe listen to the the podcast in their car. Don't look at the video when you're driving, but maybe when you park. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, again, to try and aggregate all of our fans and give them this, this new kind of talk show entertainment. That's very cool. Is there anything else coming up from Electric that you can tip us off to? Uh, well, we have a feature film that we're just finishing post on now called The Deal. And it's a terrific science fiction film. Uh, and uh, we're really anxious to, uh, to put that out to market. Uh, uh, we're gonna start shooting on the reboot of Leverage called Leverage 2.0, and that will start in New Orleans uh, this summer, uh, COVID pending. <laughs> uh, and uh, and we're just going to keep developing the app and growing it. Uh, you know, we're going to be adding a a uh, TBOD section of the app in the next few weeks, and uh, uh, we keep you know we're hoping to keep adding features uh, throughout the year. I love that. And anything else as you're looking out short term? six to eight months or long-term 12 to 24 months ahead that you're really trying to focus your energy on? Well, the last two episodes of Almost Paradise, shameless pr plug behind me, uh, uh, it are, will be airing in the next couple of weeks. But the way that we are going to move forward um, to go into seasons two and three will be very unique. And I can't really talk about how we're going to do that yet, but uh, a lot of our energy is going into that because I think it's, uh, you know, right now it's harder than ever to do independent television. You know, most of the outlets want to own worldwide rights. So we're trying to reinvent the model. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we have three shows right now that are all going. And uh, we want to keep working on, on how, what, what are the new ways to do independent television today? 
I love that. And it seems like alongside that, you're also just continuing to come up with ways to serve the fans uh, in all the places they are and in all the different formats they want to see. So congratulations. It's all really exciting. Well, you know, we are those fans. I mean, that's kind of the thing. You know, it, there, there's a lot of people who do genre entertainment because they think it's going to make them money and then one day they can do the movie that, you know, wins them an Oscar. We do genre entertainment because we love it as passionately as Scorsese loves an art house movie, you know. Uh, and I think if you approach it as a fan, you're going to be thinking about the fans and wanting to take care of them. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Dean. I really appreciate it and be well. Thanks for having me on.